In the heart of the Gilded Age, amidst the clang of industry and the rise of modern America, one family stood as a testament to wealth, ambition, and unprecedented influence. Welcome to the saga of the Vanderbilt family, their name etched in the annals of American history, synonymous with wealth beyond measure, a tale that embodies the aspirations and complexities of an era. At the helm of this dynasty was Cornelius Vanderbilt, a visionary entrepreneur whose relentless pursuit of success transformed an entire industry and laid the cornerstone of a legacy that would endure for generations. From steamships to railroads, their empire expanded, their influence reached new heights, and their opulent estates became symbols of affluence and power. The Vanderbilt family, one of America's wealthiest and most influential dynasties, emerged during the 19th century and left an indelible mark on American history. Their story began with Cornelius Vanderbilt, whose ambition and astute business acumen transformed him into a titan of industry. Born in 1794, Cornelius started as a ferry operator in New York City. His vision and strategic investments in the steamboat industry propelled him to immense wealth. He expanded into railroads, founding the New York Central Railroad and amassing a colossal fortune. Cornelius Vanderbilt's descendants went on to build grand mansions on Fifth Avenue in New York City, luxurious summer cottages in Newport, Rhode Island, the palatial Biltmore House in Asheville, North Carolina, and various other opulent homes. The Vanderbilts were once the wealthiest family in the United States. Cornelius Vanderbilt was the richest American until his death in 1877. After that, his son, William Henry Vanderbilt, acquired his father's fortune and was the richest American until his death in 1885. The progenitor of the Vanderbilt family was John Ertzoon, or Ertzen, born in 1620, a Dutch farmer from the village of De Bilt in Utrecht, Netherlands, who emigrated to the Dutch colony of New Netherland as an indentured servant to the van Kauvenhoven family in 1650. His third descendant, Cornelius Vanderbilt, began building the Vanderbilt dynasty. He was the fourth of nine children born into a Staten Island family of modest means. His ancestors were among the early arrivals to 17th century New Amsterdam. Cornelius Vanderbilt left school at age 11 and went on to build a shipping and railroad empire that, during the 19th century, would make him one of the wealthiest men in the world. Starting with a single boat, he grew his fleet until he was competing with Robert Fulton for dominance of the New York waterways. His energy and eagerness earning him the nickname Commodore, a United States Navy title for a captain of a small task force. Fulton's company had established a monopoly on trade in and out of New York Harbor. Vanderbilt, based in New Jersey at the time, flouted the law, steaming in and out of the harbor under a flag that read, New Jersey must be free. He also hired the attorney Daniel Webster to argue his case before the United States Supreme Court. Vanderbilt won, thereby establishing an early precedent for the United States, first laws of interstate commerce. The Vanderbilt family lived on Staten Island until the mid-1800s, when the Commodore built a house on Washington Place in what is now Greenwich Village. Although he always occupied a relatively modest home, members of his family would use their wealth to build magnificent mansions. Shortly before his death in 1877, Vanderbilt donated a million, equivalent to 27 million in 2022, for the establishment of Vanderbilt University in Nashville. The Commodore left the majority of his enormous fortune to his eldest son, William Henry Vanderbilt. William Henry, who outlived his father by just eight years, increased the profitability of his father's holdings, increased the reach of the New York Central Railroad, and doubled the Vanderbilt wealth. He built the first of what would become many grand Vanderbilt mansions on Fifth Avenue at 640 Fifth Avenue. William Henry appointed his first son, Cornelius Vanderbilt II, as the next head of house, Cornelius. The second built the largest private home in New York at 1 West 57th Street, containing approximately 154 rooms designed by George B. Post. He also built the Breakers in Newport, Rhode Island. 
Cornelius II's brother. William Kissam Vanderbilt also featured prominently in the family's affairs. He also built a home on Fifth Avenue and would become one of the great architectural patrons of the Gilded Age, hiring the architects for the third and surviving Grand Central Terminal. He also built Marble House at 596 Bellevue Avenue in Newport, Rhode Island. George Washington Vanderbilt, second, the third and youngest son of William Henry Vanderbilt and youngest brother of Cornelius II, hired architect Richard Morris Hunt and landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted to construct Biltmore Estate near Asheville, North Carolina. The 250-room mansion is the largest house in the United States. The Vanderbilts were prominent figures in the Gilded Age, hosting extravagant social events and supporting cultural institutions. They left an enduring legacy through their contributions to art, architecture, and philanthropy. Despite their wealth, the family faced internal strife and challenges. In subsequent generations, financial mismanagement, changing social dynamics, and legal disputes led to a decline in the family's fortune and influence. The Vanderbilt name remains synonymous with American wealth and grandeur, with their estates preserved as iconic landmarks. Their story mirrors the rise and fall of Gilded Age fortunes, symbolizing the aspirations, complexities, and evolution of American wealth in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The Vanderbilt family's journey from humble beginnings to opulent wealth and eventual decline stands as a testament to the transformative power of industry, the dynamics of family legacy, and the enduring allure of American history.